What's up, superstars? Welcome back to another episode of Sierra's Call Board. Sierra here, and this podcast is a place where I just talk about my professional theater experience as a dancer. And in today's episode, we are talking about Broadway National Tours Baby. There are a lot of casting announcements that just went out for some new North American national tours, and I'm very excited because some of my old castmates from previous contracts, just people I've known in my life who I haven't even worked with are booked, busy, and blessed. And I'm so excited that they are going on national tours because I loved my touring experience. I felt like I learned a lot about myself, a lot about other people, a lot about the industry, a lot about the world very quickly on a tour. So I'm just very excited for the people I know who are super talented and super deserving to get this chance to showcase their talent across the U.S. of and probably Canada because a lot of the tourists do go to Canada as well. So I just want to start off by shouting all of those people out, all of those talented beings and performers who are going on a national tour. Some of them are going on their first national tours. Some of them are going on their second national tours. And I'm so excited. And I'm going to see them all because I live in a city where all of the Broadway national tours come to. Like, so blessed to have been able to grow up in the city where they all have come to my town since I was little and this is really where I got introduced to Broadway shows. I didn't even really have a concept of it's a national tour or it's a Broadway national tour or like this is the exact same show that was on Broadway. I don't even think that came into my mind. I just thought like this is a show that like The Lion King, for example, like I don't think I really comprehended that this same show was taking place on Broadway, like the exact same show. But here it is in my city, in my town, and I'm getting to witness and experience this Broadway show at home along with everyone else who can't just fly to New York City and see a Broadway show or maybe they have and they want to see it again here at home and so I'm definitely going to see all my friends all my ex cat are they ex cast members old castmates old crew members I don't know what you call them but I'm gonna make sure to see their shows because I also like all the shows that they're in Hades Town some like it hot MJ National Tour Part 2, Year 2. So I'm just really excited for them. And I was just scrolling this past week, really, and the announcements were dropping this week. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so exciting. And I didn't know what I was going to talk about today. And then I'm like, let me talk about National Tours. I think it's been a minute since I really just focused in on the topic of a Broadway national tour, of a national tour, of a theater show. And so I thought this would be a great way to just congratulate all of my friends and talk about Broadway national tours and break that down. But first, let's check the call board. What is in the show of our lives? What is out of the show of our lives? You know, we As we live life, we have different acts and different scenes and different songs that all need different things to work, right? And day by day, things are in, things are out. People get swung in, people get swung out, things get swung in, things get swung out. But guess what? The show goes on. Okay, so what is in for this week is group fitness. I love group fitness. When COVID was going on, I was miserable because I could not focus on a workout in my room to save my life. Like I need people, I need community like in the flesh. Like I need someone next to me like going hard in order for me to even try. I need to see someone running faster than me so then I can hurry my butt up because if not, I'm just gonna walk. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna take a nap. I'm just gonna go on my phone. Like I cannot do the gym. I cannot do the gym solo because I get distracted. I'm on the treadmill and I get bored. Like I can't hear the TVs that are playing. And then next thing you know, I'm scrolling on my phone. Same thing when I stretch at the gym. It's just, it's no good. So group fitness, I am always going to be a fan of group fitness. I took a hot yoga class today. And then I also ran on the track. Now the track is not group fitness. However, there are people who are at the track at like your local high school track, or maybe you have like a community center that has a track. It's also free. And so, but people are there. Like there's always going to be somebody at the track at some time. 
time. And so that's not technically group fitness, but today, like some people were running and some people were running fast. And I'm like, okay, like this, my goal is to catch up to them for this part or to pass the people who are walking like two times around the track. So other people really motivate me. And that's something I'm not taking for granted. Like just the group of it all, the competition of it all, the healthy competition of having other people around you who show up and who try. And I also really like my run club that I go to and I just got invited to another run club, but I will tell you that story when I discuss my outs. So one of my out for the week, what is out of the show of my life is like keeping something that I don't like because I don't feel like returning it. Like that's out. If I'm not using it, if it's not useful, if I don't like it, it's going back. Like it's just going back to the store. I used to just keep things and I can tell that I kept things because I was just too lazy to go back to the store and return it because who wants to go to the store again after you just went? Like it really like it shiz my gut going back to the store like the next day. Like I was just here. Like, why did I do this yesterday? Like, oh my goodness, I can't. But it must be done. Get your money back and get something that you actually like. And then it's like, you don't want to return something and give the receipt and give it back, especially if you warn it. Well now, baby, I am over that. And so here is the story. First of all, I had to get some lawn chairs because my family was going to like an outdoor concert and we needed our own chairs. But of course, we don't have lawn chairs that aren't 50 years old. Not 50. Let me not play the lawn chairs like that. Let's say 20 years old. And so I'm like, we need some new lawn chairs. So we buy some lawn chairs, go to the event and realize we didn't even need these lawn chairs because there was seating there. I took them chairs right back the next day. And then, of course, the person's like, what's wrong with them? And I'm like, I did not need them they're fine like here you go and I got my money back now for an updated story which just happened yesterday and today so I'm running now Um, I do 5k's I've done two races and I need a new pair of running shoes because the hokas that I got gave me blisters and I know when I first got them that I didn't quite get them fitted correctly because I got them like at a mall and I'm not buying running shoes on my own anymore. Like I'm going to the professional run stores and I'm getting fitted every single time because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just like, I think these fit, but then it's like, sometimes you like your shoes kind of tight and sometimes you like them kind of loose. But when you're running, like there's actual science to this, like your feet are important, like your alignment's important, your knees, your hips, like it really all starts with your footwear, like like what's on your feet. So that's pretty important. So I went to the store yesterday to the run store and I just had a feeling like the guy who was helping me, he was young. He was so young, but you know, give young people a chance. And he just wasn't talking to me, wasn't looking at my feet, just wasn't giving me anything. Now, granted, I just walked in and I'm like, what are the runners buying? That's what I want. And he kind of gave me some examples and he asked me my shoe size and then he got the gym shoes in my shoe size. And like they were, they were tight, they were snug, but I was just like, okay, but they fit um, and they're comfortable. And so, you know, I was trying to talk to him. I'm like, how should they fit? Like, how should they feel? And he was kind of just was like, whatever your preference is, like you really can't go wrong. And I'm like, okay. And so I ended up walking out with some Brooks and he was like, you try them out. You have a 30 day return policy. Like you can wear them, you can run in them. And if they're still not doing anything, you can just bring them back. And I'm like, all right, bet. But it's like, I don't want to come back here. So I really hope they work. And they were really cute shoes. And so today I did my 5k for the day and like three, like my three baby toes were numb as I was running. They were numb and my big toe was kind of hitting up against the top. And I only went a half size up from my original shoe size that I thought I wore. And so I'm just like, this isn't, this isn't right. This isn't right. And so I'm like, and now I have to go all the way back to the store, but I'm going back. Like I'm going back and I'm getting the proper shoe that's going to fit my foot that I'm going to like, because I'm running like every day and I'm doing these five K's and I want my feet to feel comfortable. Um, and I want to get better. So I I go back to the store and I tell them, I'm like, yo, fit me for some running shoes, like actually fit me. So I got a new person and like we did walk tests, we did balance tests. She brought out the measuring stick. Turns out I'm actually a seven and a half. And then actually you should go one size up 
when you're getting a running shoe like a whole full size and you should have like a thumb width between your toe and the end of the shoe and like we did none of that yesterday and she was like who was helping you yesterday and I'm like he was young he really didn't know and she was like yeah he's new but me and my new lady who helped me out today she like really hooked me up she watched me run in like five or four pairs of different shoes and they all kind of felt differently she was like you need support on the balls of your foot you're rolling in and I'm like yes this is what I wanted yesterday but I was also kind of like in a rush like I kind of knew yesterday I'm like this is not gonna work out but I just didn't I just was going with it. I should have just was like, skip this. Let me wait for somebody more experienced. But I didn't want to be ageist, you know? I wanted to give the kid a chance. And I give the kid a chance. And it didn't work. So um, I ended up getting two pairs of shoes today that I'm really excited about. One, like, it feels like nothing's on my foot at all. And another pair gives me some support. So it's kind of also good to have two as you're training to kind of switch off back and forth. So um, that is my sneaker story. And then also while I was there, the lady who was helping me out, she invited me to join her run club, which meets on Saturday mornings. And then also another cool thing that I think you guys should check out is that some of these running stores, like the brands like Hoka, On, Puma, whoever, like the New Balance, they all come to, not all at the same time, but they will come to the shoe store and have try-on events for the run club. So I know all on is coming like next week and you can wear a pair of their shoes for the run for that day so you can actually go running in their shoes and not buy them and just feel them out to see if you like them or not so I thought that was a really cool thing and y'all should check out if any run stores in your area do like try-ons because that's so dope get fitted try them out wear them out see if you want to try that to be your next shoe I thought that was so cool and that's such a great promo event for sneaker companies as well so anyways back to the backpack mic check mic check one two one two moving on all my friends who book national tours congratulations i love you can't wait to see you on the show on the road and just all the content that's gonna happen of y'all traveling and living life so now let's talk about Broadway national tours and what you should know if you are thinking about possibly auditioning for a Broadway national tour or just curious about that side of the industry like who knows I wasn't even thinking about national tours when I first moved to New York City and started auditioning I was just thinking of any and everything but I wasn't really specific and then I booked an international tour which was the stage version of the international tour that I did of Dream Girls was the same version of the national tour of Dream Girls that was put on, which was the same stage version of a Dream Girls production that went on and was originally staged at the Apollo Theater. Now, is the Apollo Theater a Broadway theater? Technically, no, because it's not on Broadway. However, the size capacity of the theater does match that. Like, I think it's like over a thousand seats or something thing but the Apollo Theater is a legendary in its own right so anyways so there was a dream girls production that was put on at the Apollo Theater and that production was taken on a national tour and after that national tour different touring production companies then bought that tour and decided hey we're gonna do it in Korea we're gonna do it in China we're gonna do it in Japan we're gonna do it in Africa and took that same show all around the world and I was able to do that show um, in Japan and in China but you look at the costumes that were used and some of the props that were used and people's names are written in the costumes so you can see like Adrian Warren's name like written in some of the shoes and just all of the past cast members who are still active in the industry and doing other shows like you're wearing their clothes and the same thing happened when I did the national tour of Donna Summer like you're wearing the people who did the show on Broadway like it's the same show you're wearing their clothes um, you're touching their props it's the same show so where was I going with this so what do you need to know first things first you booked your Broadway national tour you gotta pack babes you have to pack now how you come into a Broadway national tour or a national tour of any show can kind of happen in a lot of ways. You can submit a self-tape. You can audition in New York City. You can also 
come in mid tour and rehearse uh, while you're on the road. Like everyone really has a different path in the industry, but also has a different path within the contract that we're all on or that you're all on. So packing is unique to each person. Let's say you live in New York City, you're rehearsing the show in New York City. And so you can like live and rehearse the show all in the same spot. So then you can just pack your stuff and leave when the tour is ready to leave. However, not all national tours rehearse in New York City. And you might have auditioned in New York City, but now you got to pack up and go to let's say Pennsylvania, which is what I had to do. Was it Pennsylvania? Yeah, it was. And so you have to pack up for a two week long or a month long rehearsal process in Pennsylvania. So you're away from home. You're in a hotel rehearsing for the show in a different state. And then from that state, then you actually start the tour. So from rehearsal straight on the road, but technically rehearsal is the road. Okay. (laughs) So it's just different. You never know what you're going to get. And then you you're also touring a different city. So you have to pack for all different weather, for all different climates, but you only get that one checked bag or those two checked bags and your carry on and you can make it work. I know people who are fashionistas, who are over packers and they made it work. Hopefully you have access to a laundry so you can, you know, wash your rehearsal clothes so you don't have to pack a bunch of rehearsal clothes. Me, I packed a bunch of rehearsal clothes. I'm a leggings girl. And in my mind, leggings don't weigh a lot. And so I just packed 12 pairs of leggings. I used to work at Lululemon, so I had them. I packed 12 pairs of leggings. I packed 12 like outfits to wear in rehearsal. And I did not need all that. I could have had five, five pairs of leggings and just rotated because hopefully wherever you're staying, hopefully you have access to a laundry. And if not, guess what? You can wash that in the tub or in the sink because everyone's doing it. Almost everyone's doing it. You will clean your clothes. You will find a way to clean your clothes. So just you need less than what you think you need. And sometimes on tour, you also get a trunk where you can kind of like rotate in and out at different stops in and out of your trunk. So keep a bunch of clothes packed away in the trunk or like a iron or whatever you need in the trunk and only take it out when you need it. But then it's kind of like, how do you know what you need? But also if you're in a national tour, like in the U S you can, you're going to be close to something. You're going to be in civilization. Most of the time, sometimes we were in the middle of nowhere and that was an adventure, but packing, don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Keep it simple. That's my advice for packing. And you're going to shop. You're going to shop. You're going to stop by a mall and buy something new. Now, what I did on my tour, because we were going, we were traveling throughout summer, through winter, and then we were in northern states. We were in southern states like every other week, just back and forth and back and forth. And so I figured out like who I knew who was coming to see me on the road, like which shows my family were coming two and I would like plan it out and I'd be like hey like I overpacked can you take some of this stuff back home and I'll pick it up when I get off tour and then also I live in a city where the tours come so I went home and I performed at home and it was the time of my life and I literally switched out everything when I got home I just really went in cleaned out my suitcase and just repacked a whole new wardrobe for the road so figure out how you can kind of plan and overlap with different people as you travel. And if you're going back to where you're from, your hometown, or even if you're going to the town that you moved to, that you live in, just figure out a way to kind of do do a swap out. And lastly, I kind of went on a little ramble there in the beginning with the shoes and then with the packing because I had a lot of bullet points, but that's okay because guess what? There's always next week. So let's talk about per diem. So you have your salary, you have your what your your weekly rate, what you're making every week just to be in the show. And then on top of that, you have a per diem of like $40 a day or $100 a day or how much ever you need a day that the company gives you a day. And that's just for 
food. Your per diem is for food. There's like a food per diem. And so that is just added right on top of your weekly rate that you're already getting paid for the show. So let's say it's $40 a day for food, but 40 times seven, and you can add that onto your check. However, you're on the road. However, sometimes you're in the middle of nowhere. Sometimes you can't walk to the nearest restaurant or grocery shop. It all depends on what type of tour you on. Are you part of a union? Like it's just different, different strokes for different folks, for different companies. And so sometimes you have to Uber Eats. Sometimes your hotel doesn't have free breakfast. And that Uber Eats for a chicken wing is going to be $55 because you're in the middle of Kansas, right? And they're coming 50 miles from where ever. So it's kind of like sometimes it's not enough money for the per diem. So you got to be smart. You got to starve. No, I'm just kidding. Don't starve. Feed yourself. But you got to get really creative with different things. Like I traveled with snacks. Like when you were by a grocery store, you're just stacking up on those snacks and those bars and fruit so you can be fueled to do your show. So that's the like food per diem. And then on some tours, you get housing per diem. So the tour has hotels where everyone in the company can stay at. Like this is the touring hotel for the show. Now, sometimes it's close to the theater. Sometimes it's really far away from the theater. And in that case, or in whatever case you want, you can get a buyout. So you don't have to stay at the hotel that the company is staying at. And you can get that money that would have been paid for your room. You can get that back and make your own accommodation. So if you can find someplace cheaper, then you can pocket that money that you would have spent staying at you know the company chosen hotel and then but not all tours let you get the buyout for housing and so you have to stay wherever the company is staying and if that place is like very far away sometimes a company has you take a bus like you have a pickup time you have a call time for the bus to take you to the theater for the show sometimes a company gives you um rental cars so they'll give you a rental car to travel back and forth from the theater However, there was a case on one contract where if the theater was in a mile distance from the hotel, then you had to figure out your own way back and forth to the theater and there was one place oh where were we I forgot where we were but it was a walk like yes it was a mile but it was the longest mile we were going cross freeways like we just could not find a good walkable way to get to and from the theater we were traveling and groups we were getting lost we were cutting through fields it was an adventure so that is also something to keep in mind like not everything is going to be planned out for you every single minute of every single day where you're going to stay who's going to do your laundry like they're not planning that out for you they're just letting you know what time you're going to get to the theater and what time you need to get to transportation to get to you where you need to go but it's up to you to kind of plan your life and still try to adult while you're on the road find your food find your laundry find your transportation or find your housing like that is a lot to go through and I know a lot of people who have struggled with that or had a a hard time finding that balance and finding housing and then on top of that you have to rehearse and do your show at night and that's where I'm going to leave you at this rehearsals and put in rehearsals and also like mic checks and theater tours when you first arrive at a new theater those are all extra stuff outside of just performing your show so usually when you first get to a new city you have to show up and do a rehearsal and do a mic check and do a tour of the theater and do a cast meeting at in your new city in your new place just to learn this new environment and so that's also another time factor like and sometimes you're coming right off the plane right off the bus right into this cast meeting right into a show now then it's a mic check right after that and then you're you do the show you get done at 11 o'clock at night and then you're kind of you might be still wired from the show you might go out with your castmates and then the next day you gotta wake up and do a put-in rehearsal maybe do two put-ins right before another show or another two show day so that's also just the reality but you love what you do and you know how to do it and you know how to do it well 
And that's also something that you really have to keep in the forefront of your mind that like, this is what you want to do until it's not what you want to do. And then you know, and that's okay too. So that's all I have to say for today on the national tour topic. Let me know if you have anything to say about Broadway national tours or have any questions or anything. Um, It's been a grand week. I hope y'all have a ball and see you next week. Bye.